Welcome back. Karen May Melton is with me here, and she has got one of the most interesting and needed business opportunities that I have run across, and uh, uh, she's doing such a great service, and 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 we we want we always say the business has got to differentiate itself. Wow, okay. does this differentiate itself? Is this business scalable? This business is scalable. Is this providing a service that people need? It's providing a service that people need, and we've talked about it in the first segment. We talked about the need uh, of, of, of family care and the education of family care uh, of, of, of the members of the family to know what to do, to have someone to be able to communicate with. Now let's get to the business side of it mm -hmm. because in order for you to scale it, in order for you to really provide the services that these people need, you've got to, this is a, you got to make money, you got to have a profit yes. uh, because you don't have a profit, you can't provide the services and you can't do the things that you want to do to help mm -hmm. the family members. So how do you, uh, how, you know, how do you go out and market? Tell me the business side. Sure. Uh, how, how do you charge? How are you gonna get customers? How do you scale it? Go. Go, okay. <laughs> so first of all, uh, a lot of what we provide for family caregivers is free. And that's important because we do want yep. to be able to help family caregivers. But there will be a point at which we charge for uh, more in-depth and upgraded services. So for instance, anybody can go through the Eight Principles program for free and get access to a customized family caregiver plan. Now, beyond that, we will have tools, and we're still in development with these, we will have tools that will help family caregivers coordinate their tasks better, their responsibilities better. We have a uh, platform that's in development called Care Central, and that will be a place where family caregivers can invite other family members to participate, they can chat privately, uh -huh. so they can communicate about what's going on with mom. You know, we went to the doctor today. This is what the doctor said. What do you guys think? This is the care plan that we're following. Um, mom has an appointment in three weeks. Who can take her? Let's share the calendar. We can assign tasks. So it's a way to coordinate the tasks all associated with family caregiving and then communicate what is needed to the family members that are participating, which is very, very important. That is important because it looks always comes down to one or two of the family members bear the burden that 10 or 12 could share mm -hmm. and it's just stuck on them and they really have no way to communicate really mm -hmm. and, and have this kind of platform. And I think it's so good that you, that you, you the base platform is free. Yes. Go to the website, go, go to your, your what, seven or eight principles mm -hmm. that you have uh, and, and then of course, they're going to need more advanced help. Right. And you can, then at some point, you're going to be able to talk to them about specifics, I guess. Exactly. And that platform will also allow, uh, eventually, for other people in the, in the care coordination team to participate. So if there is a geriatric care manager involved, um, the family caregiver, uh, that's the, the member, can open that platform up, that communication platform, to the geriatric care manager or a case manager so that the, everybody is really on the same page about what's going on and they can share information there. So it, it really, the idea is to one, get the family involved and make it easy for them to communicate in situations that sometimes it's, it's not very easy. And sometimes a family caregiver doesn't want to get on the phone with her brother and sister no. and husband and, and each phone call talk about the same things, especially if it's not good news. I'm going so through that right easier. now with uh, with my mother-in-law and, right. and, and 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 my wife and, and 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 they're they're trying to coordinate that she's maybe 85 and dementia, mm -hmm. lives in her home, mm -hmm. she needs help, got a person there with her, not enough. It's always mm -hmm. and it's it's a burden on the family. It's all they can it, it consumes them, mm -hmm. and and decisions they don't have any input for decisions. Right. They don't have any expertise in this, and this mm -hmm. this gives them access to that type of that type of expertise. How do you get this message out to more people? And, and, and obviously, by having it on the internet, you're gonna mm -hmm. be able to reach people all over, all over the world. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and communicate with them that way, and it's a wonderful thing that technology gives us and that we can, we can do that. Uh, and you can educate these people and, and mm -hmm. give them a community of help and work. When do you start charging them? And what do you charge them for? We charge them for access to that Care Central platform that I told okay. you about. And then also included in that would be access to 
the 24-7 care line right. so that they can pick up the phone if they have an issue, they can't go through all of the eight principles or there's a crisis, they can pick up the phone and they can talk to somebody. Talk to a person yes. who is a professional. That's not a 25-year-old person who answers the phone. Correct. It's somebody that can Yes, it's, it's a master's trained professional ah. who can counsel them through family caregiving issues that have experience with family caregivers and or experience with dealing with seniors. Can you give me some idea of what kind of dollars would be involved in somebody needing that service? Would, have you got oh, a price? Yeah, yeah so um, there's a scale, but it would range anywhere from $10 a month up to $29 a month. That's it? Mm -hmm. it's, we want to keep the price point very inexpensive so that people can have access to the services that they need. So then you need to have, to be able to do that, mm -hmm. you need to have some volume of business. Obviously, right. the, another thing about the communications of the internet, mm -hmm. once you have it built, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's very cost effective for you. And so you can pass on that value to the people and keep your price down. How are you gonna market this? Uh, how are you gonna get, tell more people about this? You know, our, our, mm -hmm. our, our, our friends out there that are listening to us, they're, all startup businesses or businesses that have been going for a while, they're small business entrepreneurs, they're looking for, how do I get another customer? Right. How, how do I get a referral? Uh, how do I expand my marketing mm -hmm. and my messaging? And, and, and the entrepreneur and you and I, we can't afford to go on uh, 60 minutes right. uh, uh, every Sunday night and have an ad because that will cost us too much money. And mm -hmm. if you if you want to have an ad in the Super Bowl, it costs you about you know five million dollars right. a minute. <laughs> so you can't do that. We're not there yet. <laughs> so what what uh, how, how do you do this? How do you market? How do you get the word out? Good question. Well, first we have to understand where our target customers are already. Okay. What are they doing? Where are they going online? What are the other services online that they're using? And then partner up with those types of services. So if they're already going to other websites, then we want to create relationships with those websites whereby we can pass that information along through that website. So not just in a banner campaign, but actually yeah. create partnerships with other online uh, companies that are already servicing our family caregivers, albeit in another segment. Partnering, yeah. that's what you're doing and see, we all get stuck on our little world that we're in mm -hmm. and doing it myself because I'm an entrepreneur. I'm headstrong, mm -hmm. I'm independent, and I'm gonna do this myself. That's great. But if you're gonna build a business, you gotta have partners. I don't care mm -hmm. how small your business is or how big it is. You've got to have partners that can help you and you can help them in mm -hmm. getting the word out and sharing the message, sharing the platforms yes. that are in like businesses, and that's what you're saying. That is. Can you give me an example of uh, some people you might partner with? Have you started partnerships already? We have started uh, talking to different companies. Some of them I can't mention yeah, because sure. we're in NDAs. But the idea is, uh, well, I'll use one company, Law Info, since, yeah. since I was with Law Info. Um, a partnership with Law Info would be a great partnership for Care Conscious because we can give our family caregivers access to pre-screened, pre-qualified attorneys that Law Info already does the work for. They already pre-screen and pre-qualify. So that's a great service for us to be able to pass on to our family caregivers who do need to get uh, information about wills and trusts and estates. Sure. So that's a, that's a prime example of a great partnership. So Law Info can put our message out to uh, their you know, hundreds of thousands of users uh, when they are coming to Law Info to search for estate planning or yeah. um, elder law attorneys or even you know, nursing home neglect attorneys. They can also see, hey, here's a great resource for you, if you're a family caregiver and you need this, this is a great resource. How about, and we can reciprocate. How about large companies? Oh, yeah. AT&T, Coca-Cola, IBM, sure. and those things. They're hundreds of thousands of employees are dealing with all this. How about if you mm -hmm. went through those companies and said, this is a service we provide, you can let your, let your, let your people know about it. Mm -hmm. I think that's another place. It is. And government agencies. Yes. They're, they're dealing with this all the time, right? Yes. And, and we and are in talks with government agencies. Government agencies, yes. you know, are, are dealing with this, helping people in this situation. And, and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And mm -hmm. so I would think you just got to reach out to all those people. And I think all of them would be glad to hear mm -hmm. that there's a reputable, good service. Right. High touch, high value, great content, and, and affordable. Mm -hmm. Where you're not charging these people five hundred dollars a month, which they can't pay, but my good, ten to twenty nine dollars a month to be able to mm -hmm. go and give them basic understanding is unbelievable. It is. And on the business side, you there is a business to business model because companies, let's say health plan insurers, for instance, sure. um, they have a vested interest in making sure that their insureds are healthy. 
Yeah. And if you look at family caregivers and you realize that they have their own subset of medical needs and they're, they're largely avoiding their own medical needs to care for the needs of their parents, you realize that, hey, if you can prevent them from delaying their appointments and you can get them into the doctor on time, you can get them to pay attention to their own health and well-being, that they are going to cost less to insure. So there's a model through which we can offer our service to businesses that would pay a licensing fee, and then they would offer that in turn to their, in this case we'll you know, talk about health plan, to their, insured, um, to their insureds, and everybody wins. Well, this has been pretty <laughs> interesting, and, and, and what I want you to t take from this is, is Kara May here has got a business background. Starting up a business from, from an idea is hard. Yes. <laughs> And you've got to talk to a lot of people and you've got to get a lot of help and a lot of input. And that's what we're trying to communicate to you people. Don't operate in a box. Right. We have facilities now to be able to share ideas and, 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 and share concerns and learn from each other. We learn from each other by this mechanism that we have here uh, to be able to put entrepreneurs together with entrepreneurs who are mm -hmm. really doing business. You didn't hear motivation here. Mm -hmm. You heard facts. You heard this lady who's got great business skills talk about what she's doing, how she's thinking, but she's got a marketplace that's huge and growing, providing a quality service, making it a value proposition, and you know, taking the steps to uh, put this, place, uh, the, 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 this business in place because I can tell with you, Karen May, you like what you do. Yeah, I think it's the, the greatest thing to be able to have a company that you're doing something good, and bonus, you can make money. I mean, that's the killer yeah. combo. And if you don't love what you do, you're not going to be successful. Right. I don't care what it is, because you won't work this hard mm -hmm. unless you love what you do. And so find something that you love what you do and provide a service, and that will make you feel better, but it's going to help you have a successful bit. Karen May Melton, thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, Ryan.